It is time to do the final cut on the keel timber. So we're gonna put in all the screws here and respring the batten and mark the line where we need to cut. It'll be the rabbit line. And we'll fire up the saws and see if we can get this thing sliced down to its final shape today. Once the batten is sprung and both lines are marked, we can use a succession of circular saws to cut down the sides of the keel timber. It's going to be a slow process. <laughs> Yeah, we got the first side done and now we'll do uh, the other side and switch over. Yeah, well, I think we'll do the other side and then we'll bump up for the bigger saw and we'll do it again. Sounds good. Better than switching on and off. Yeah, at least that way too, the kerfed cut. The pencil lines are kind of hard to see, but the saw kerf is kind of hard to miss. <laughs> mm -hmm. So we'll get the, the hardest part done now. They're gonna bind up. It might. It might. We'll see what happens. Mm -hmm. It's going all right. It's gonna be slow. The most curve is at the two ends, though. Yeah. So once I get a little bit farther in, it should be. Pretty smooth sailing, I would think. With the help from Ryan, who flew in from Colorado to give us a hand, we cut the keel timber down to its final shape. And we did that with a succession of the small worm saw, the big worm saw, and finally, our friend Simon's beam saw. So thank you, Simon. Um, this is much, much easier than flipping it and trying to connect the dots like we did last time. Even with this gigantic monster beam saw, we're still about four inches shy of being able to cut all the way through the timber. So our two options are to flip the timber and cut from the other side and do our best to make sure those cuts match. Uh, but what we're gonna do, and I think it's a little slower but safer option, 
is to mark out how deep that beam saw cut and I'll go down with the axe and just carefully whack off you know this six inch strip that we've got and then the last bit we can kerf remove with the ads and finally the power plane and hand plane um, it would just be a uh, really unfortunate if the cuts didn't line up if we cut from the other side and we mismeasured somewhere uh, so this is the kind of thing that we feel it's better to go a little bit slower and try to do it a bit more carefully so I'll have Alex help me we'll go through we'll mark it and then I'll grab the old axe and do a little axe work now since we roughly cut the keel timber shape and then finally cut it to shape the extra width is not the same all the way down so I can't take a saw and run it because in some places it's really thin and in other places it's upwards of an inch and a half thick so what I'm going to do is go down with the axe and just whack it. And I'm not trying to cut all the way through. I'm just trying to cut enough of the fibers that I can then haul this piece up. I'm going to get some wedges and just kind of keep working down like that. And then once this is all split off, I can come do the final shaping and remove this a lot more confidently. Yeah, I don't know if I can pick it up on the mic, but... Once I got that side piece removed where we had cut with the saw, the next step was it came through the chainsaw and made a whole bunch of curves very carefully. And then I started at the highest point in the keel timber, notched out a couple pieces with the chisel, and then went through with the axe and whacked them out. And the reason I started at the high point and the reason I started with the chisel is that you can imagine the grain of this wood runs fairly straight, and then we curved it. So as I'm chiseling out from the center, the grain is still running parallel with that high spot. So the chances of me lifting up a piece and the grain running down into where we want, where we're going to need good timber, is a lot less. If I'd started at the end, imagine I cut here and that grain runs parallel and it's going to want to rip off into the timber and I have a much bigger chance of having some sort of tear out. So in instances like this, it's pretty important to read the grain. So we started high and I'm just going to keep whacking down. The axe is a lot faster for removing this big material. And then I'll probably come through carefully with the ads, smooth it out a little bit, and then it'll be down to the power planer and the hand planer. And we cut from what will be the top of the keel timber, because the very bottom edge of the heel timber here gets shaped down to meet the lead keel. So the rabbit will be kind of in the middle here, and then everything outside of the rabbit is going to end up getting shaped. So if we do end up with some tear out, or I do cut a little too deep with the chainsaw or something on this edge, more than likely it's going to end up getting fared out um, where if we had cut from the other side it would be a little bit of a bigger issue um, so we got a little more wiggle room this way well i'm gonna keep whacking
Once the X and ads work was done, I took the power planer and went down and now it is down to some final truing with the hand tools. So I'm going to come through with the framing square and just make sure that I'm nice and flat across and 90 degrees to the top of the keel timber. And any place that needs adjusting, I'm going to do that with either the trusty number no. 5 jack plane or the Lee Valley bevel up smoother. And just slowly work one end to the other. And then once I'm happy that everything is 90 degrees to the face, I'll come down and just run down them a couple times with the plane and take out any of the tiny irregularities left by the saw. And that should give us a really nice, smooth, fair, jointed keel. And then after that, I can scribe the lines across for each station and it'll be ready for varnish. And in this case, we're using the Total Boat Danish Teak Sealer. So hoping to get that on in the next couple hours so that this timber isn't drying out and checking on us because it is hot and sunny in here today. Um, so yeah, psyched. And once we get this side done, we can flip it and start on the other half. The keel timber is cut to shape and one side is totally smooth and squared up. Uh, once that was done, I used the framing square and just squared the stations across and marked those. And the last step is to give it a coat of some Danish teak sealer. And this is what we're going to use on the entire interior of the boat um, that you're not going to see. So all of the frames, all of the floor timbers, the keel timber, all that stuff that's inside of the boat, we're gonna do in this. Uh, so the top of the keel timber is already done. We'll give the side a couple coats, and then we'll flip it and do the same axe, chainsaw, axe, adds, jack plane, smoothing plane, as we did today. And the keel timber will basically be finished. After that, it'll just need to be cut to final length, but we won't do that for a while, not until we have the bow and stern assemblies together. Yesterday, I made a rookie mistake, and that is to be expected, because I am a rookie boat builder. And what I did was I squared the station lines 90 degrees to the top of the keel timber. And that's old habit from building things like buildings and barns and sheds and furniture, which are often square. Um, so in boat building, everything is done off of a flat base, and our keel timber is not parallel to that base. It's cocked a little bit and the station lines are vertical. That means those station lines actually go across the side of the keel timber at a little bit of an angle. So we pulled up the lofting floor, and if we go over there, I can show you what I mean, and we'll come over here and fix these mistakes. So thankfully I caught it now when we only have one coat of varnish on here, so it's easy to clean that up and then rescribe them. Um, and then we didn't miss it until we fit the keel or something, because that could be pretty disastrous. So I gotta kinda kick all of these habits of squaring things across, because that's not, not quite how this works. There's, there's a good learning curve ahead. <laughs> this red line, I'm sure it's really hard to see, is the top of the keel timber. This vertical line is one of the stations. So what I did yesterday was put the square on the top of the keel timber, like so and squared down and you can see there's a pretty big gap there because the station line is not actually square to the top of the keel timber because the keel timber is a bit cocked compared to the baseline. So what I did was took the trusty bevel gauge and set that to the angle. So the handle goes on the flat face of the keel timber and this will give us the correct angle down the side of the keel timber so that the station line is actually where it needs to be. And if we were off by a bit and we lined up the ballast keel, we would be 
you know, half three quarters of an inch off of where we wanted to be, which wouldn't be a good thing. Um, so it's good we caught it early and we can go remedy the situation. All right, step one of fixing the boo-boo. Remove the old line. Okay, step two, scrub the new line. So that is the angle of the new line. And then we just got to extend it. So, you can see to where that was. And that's how far off we were. So we're finally gonna put some shellac on the keel timber here, and that'll be the first base coat for the finish. Uh, the reason we're gonna put some shellac on is this whole face of the keel timber will get bedded to the deadwood and to the lead keel, and we need to put bedding compound in there, uh, either roofing tar or dolphinite. And either way, the shellac will make a nice barrier and help keep the oils from the tar or from the dolphinite from absorbing into the wood. So we'll give it two coats of shellac and then two coats of an anti-fouling paint and then we'll put the bedding compound and put it against the lead keel. Yeah, it ain't cold in here, huh? No, it is not cold in here. <laughs> So hopefully we can get this coat on, do another coat this evening, and then get the two coats of bottom paint on it tomorrow. With the keel timber cut to shape and sealed with a couple coats of shellac, it's now time to start shaping the lead keel. In the next video, we fur out the tops and the sides with some Total Boat Total Fair. We get it painted just in time for our annual open house. And then we have to flip it to fair out the bottom. So thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Or, for those of you that are close enough and are planning on going to the Wooden Boat Show in Mystic Seaport, we'll be there right next to Jamestown Distributor for the whole weekend. So come and meet us in person. And again, a special thank you to everybody who's been watching and who has supported us with donations or with help around here. It's been really great and we really wouldn't be able to share this without you.